What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And the other day on my Instagram stories, uh, I was discussing repressed memories and some of the ideas behind it, some of the bad psychology and science behind it, all that. And a lot of you actually reached out to me and you were really interested in this subject. So I was like, what the heck? Let's do a video diving a little bit deeper into this subject, all right? And by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you need to, all right? At The Rewired Soul, okay? So anyways, my beautiful girlfriend Tristan and I, we've been really into the show Prodigal Son on Fox. Like, if you're into, like, serial killer stuff, like, it's a great show. Love the show. It's really cool. Like, my one critique... My one critique is that it's like any other kind of crime show where it gets starts to get a little repetitive after a while. Like for example, like the character Gil, he's like, Bright, we need you to help solve this case. And Bright's like, I think I know how to catch the killer. And then Gil's like, your methods are unconventional and you need to get off this case. And then Bright's like, I found the killer. And then Gil's like, oh my God. And that just happens over and over and over again. But anyways, anyways, one of the, uh, the main parts of the story is that the main character Bright, he has repressed memories. His father was a serial killer and there's this memory just stuck down in his brain. And throughout the show, he's trying everything he can to just yank that sucker out. All right, so hopefully I didn't spoil the show too much if you haven't seen it, but go check it out. But yeah, I wanted to discuss the bad psychology around repressed memories as it comes up a lot in the show. And one of the whole reasons why repressed memories are you know, kind of a topic of conversation when it comes to psychology and therapy is because a lot of the ways that it's depicted in movies and TV shows, all right? But like I said, like there's a lot of bad science around this stuff. So what is a repressed memory, all right? So the idea is that repressed memories are based on a traumatic experience that you went through and they were just so traumatic that your brain is trying to protect you from those memories so it just shoves those down deep into your subconscious, all right, to keep you safe. And our brains do this quite a bit. Our brains are regularly trying to keep us safe, especially when it has something to do with trauma and our fight, flight, or freeze response, right? Like, for example, PTSD, it makes you much more sensitive to triggers associated with that traumatic event. So you don't experience it again, right? So a loud noise might make you just poof, take off or a sight or a smell or whatever that may be. So I want you to ask yourself some questions real quick. If repressed memories are based on traumatic experience, like let's look at large populations of people who have never had an instance of a repressed memory. A great example is Holocaust survivors. If you look into it, if you research it, there is not one Holocaust survivor who has had repressed memories. And you would think you'd be able to find some because surviving a concentration camp, like that is one of the most traumatic things like any human being in the history of mankind has been through, right? Or let's look at natural disasters. Um, one of the biggest natural disasters to hit the United States was Hurricane Katrina. Just look at how many people died, how many people survived. Why is it that if repressed memories are based on traumatic experiences, you have nobody who survived Hurricane Katrina who just, pff, they can't remember it, right? Like a lot of the children from Hurricane Katrina who survived, like they're now adults and they're not experiencing repressed memories. And here's the thing, like any of you watching this video who have experienced a trauma, like those of us who have experienced trauma, we know the issue isn't that the memories are repressed and way down in our subconscious. The issue is, is that we can't get rid of those memories for the life of us. Like people who have been through trauma wished they could get rid of those memories, right? But traumatic experiences, those are constantly, constantly in our memory. So although we might forget some of the specific details of the event, that event is just imprinted in our mind, okay? So where did the idea of repressed uh, memories come from? Well, they came from 
Sigmund Freud and Freudian psychology, like, like props to the dude, he helped move, uh, you know, psychology in, you know, into the forefront and a lot of new theories came from it. So like, that's awesome. But the reality is, is that most people today know that this dude was like a coked up lunatic and a lot of his theories were absolutely ridiculous. But this was kind of how Freudian psychology was. He believed that all of us have these repressed memories, thoughts, and emotions that are just deep down in our subconscious and it's causing us a lot of issues today, all right? Now, the problem with this is that it's very bad science, all right? Like, today, we have a lot of science that backs up psychology and there's bad science around these these repressed memories. So logicallyfallacious.com uh, explains unfalsifiability as this, all right? So unfalsifiability, also known as untestability, is confidently asserting that a theory or hypothesis is true or false even though the theory or hypothesis cannot possibly be contradicted by an observation or the outcome of any physical experiment, usually without strong evidence or good reasons. So basically, somebody like Freud, they would say, hmm, you're depressed because you have repressed memories. And then you're like, no, I don't think so. I've never been through anything traumatic or anything like that. And they'd be like, oh no, this means that the repressed memories are just really deep down in there, right? Like there's no way to make that person think otherwise because anything you do is just evidence that they're even more right than they thought. You see what I mean? Like any good science has to be tested to ensure that it's falsifiable. Like remember that scene from like Austin Powers where he's like, it's a man, baby. And he like tries to rip the wig off that poor old lady. And then when it doesn't come off, he just thinks, no, it's just really stuck on there. And he just starts yanking her head even more. You know what I mean? Like the difference between this, this fictional idiot character, Austin Powers and somebody who's trying to pull up these repressed memories is eventually Austin Powers just stopped. He didn't start picking out her hairs by clumps and just saying, oh, this must have been one of those newfangled glued on wigs. No, he realized he was just wrong. So now you're like, well, Chris, what's the problem? What's the issue? So in a show like Prodigal Son, where uh, Malcolm Bright is dealing with repressed memories, like it's a fun little storyline, nothing really, you know, has any effect on real life experiences. But in real life, that's not the case. Like in real life, this whole quackery of repressed uh, memories has ruined lives, all right? So when, when repressed memories and they call it memory recovery therapy was really at its height, was like in the 1980s, early 1990s, around the time of satanic panic. All right, so those of you who don't know about satanic panic, like that stuff is, whoo it's nuts. The whole country was just freaking out, believing that there were all these little satanic cults all over the place, and they were using memory recovery therapy to pull up these repressed memories of people, and they were planting in false memories and making people believe that like their parents were sexually abusing them as a child, and they were part of some sick satanic cult that was like making the kids like witness like human sacrifices and said they were like eating babies. It was absolutely bananas. So not only were a lot of parents falsely accused, but there were a ton of like daycare teachers who were falsely accused right? Like all these like therapists and child psychologists were planting these false memories in kids and then bringing them to the surface. Like there was one kid who said like uh, uh, his teachers at the daycare tied him naked to a tree and had the whole class like watch and it was like right next to a busy street and like nobody could confirm that that ever happened. The same kid, he said that like the teachers took him on a private airplane. Like 
think about that. And it was all because a therapist was coercing him into believing that he had repressed memories. So like I, I said, like uh, the whole, you know, memory recovery therapy, it ruined a lot of lives. And one of the stories that absolutely breaks my heart is the story of Holly Ramona. All right, this took place in the 90s. And Holly Ramona, who was in her 20s, um, she went to a therapist because she had an eating disorder as well as depression, all right? And her therapist said that eating disorders and even depression are the result of being molested as a child, right? And Holly Ramona was like, no, I was never, you know, abused or molested by my father when I was a child. And again, because this therapist is such a firm believer in repressed memories and you can't prove her wrong, she sat back and she was like, hmm, you saying that you don't uh, remember any trauma, that just means that the trauma is really down in there, right? And the therapist started pressuring her and trying to make her remember these things. And we need to understand, like, I don't know if you're a fan of these types of shows, but I suggest you watch them on Netflix. There's a series called Confession Tapes. There's another mini series called The Confessions Killer. But this happens a lot where uh, interrogators plant false memories in the person's head and eventually the person admits to a crime that they never even did because they were shoved with all these different memories, right? So anyways, in the case of Holly Ramona, after a while of her not remembering any of this childhood sexual abuse, the therapist ended up sending Holly Ramona to a psychiatrist who used, what's the name of this drug? Sodium amidol. Is that how you say it? Anyways, that's AKA truth serum. So when doused with this truth serum and uh, a question by this psychiatrist, all of these false memories that were planted by her therapist, Holly Ramona started uh, remembering, quote unquote, that her father did molest her when she was a child. Holly Ramona also remembered that her dad forced her to have sex with her own dog, all right? And this resulted in Holly Ramona accusing her father of molesting her as a child, and it completely ruined this man's life, all right? So thankfully, this uh, Holly Ramona's father was one of the first people to stand up for this stuff, right? About this whole quackery of repressed memories, and he ended up suing the therapist and the psychiatrist for uh, uh, negligence and malpractice, right? And he ended up winning $500,000. And this was a landmark case, like you can check it out, I'll put some links down in the description below. But anyways, when this happened, a ton, a ton of malpractice lawsuits started going all over the place, all over the country, because so many lives were ruined based on memory recovery therapy and this whole idea of repressed memories, right? There were people who were being uh, sent to jail based on the testimony of somebody who was coerced into believing that these things that never really happened actually happened. So because of this string of malpractice lawsuits going everywhere, a lot of therapists and psychologists took a step back and they're like, oh my God, like we need to stop doing this. Like, what are we doing? You know, like, like maybe, maybe their depression, maybe their anxiety, maybe their eating disorder, maybe, you know, whatever they're dealing with is not a result of child molestation and maybe it's something else, right? But unfortunately, there were a lot of psychologists and mental health professionals who just doubled down on this. So even though it's been, you know, over 20 years since that Holly Ramona uh, uh, lawsuit, um, there are some psychologists and therapists who still practice this form of psychology. And I think it's important as, for any of us who go um, get help for our mental health that we know which types of therapy are evidence-based and which are not, right? So one of the saddest parts of this uh, story of Holly Ramona that I wanna share is because of these false memories that happened and because Holly Ramona already you know, accused her father, like, 
she's still estranged from that man and that family is still torn to pieces. And we don't know if it's because Holly Ramona still believes those false memories or she started to believe those false memories because if she were to admit that she falsely accused her father, that would cause her to be in a in a lot of trouble, you know what I mean? Um, like, have you ever lied to yourself so much that you believe that lie or you lied about something and in order to make sure you didn't get found out, you had to keep selling that lie, you know what I mean? So anyways, it's a really sad story and I'm gonna link down in the description below. Um, there's a therapist, uh, a former memory recovery therapist named Linda Ross and she did an interview with uh, This American Life and the transcript, I've linked it down in the description below. But anyways, um, she, she was part of bringing up these memories for a lot of people that never even happened and ruining a lot of families, a lot of lives. And what happened was Linda Ross couldn't sleep at night and she ended up going to a support group for falsely accused family members of repressed memories. And she's like, oh my God, like, what have I done? You know, I've destroyed these families. You know what I mean? So yeah, like I love learning about psychology and all these different things. And I really wanted to talk about this because this is something I didn't know. So I'm guessing some of you didn't know about it either. But if there's anything else, uh, any other topics uh, around psychology uh, or anything like that that you want me to discuss, let me know. I read a ton of books and I'm always trying to learn. So I love talking about them on the channel. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> I wanna send out a huge thank you to everybody out there supporting me on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at TheRewiredSoul.com, as well as The Rewired Soul merch. You're all amazing, and I'll see you next time.